thank you very much for the introduction. I hope you can hear me. Um, yeah, my voice is not the best anymore. Don't worry, I'm not sick. But I was teaching in person all week again for the first time in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm also very happy to be in a, on, in a really in-person event again. It's also one of the first um, for me. So, um, geospatial analysis for the smart city is a topic that, um, how much time do I have? Two hours, three hours? <laughs> no, 15 minutes, so I try to um, be as quickly as possible. You all know data, and you probably don't know that more than 80% of all data has a geospatial component. So um, there is a where, there is a what, and there is a when in, in many, many data sets. And as soon as there is a where in there, we talk about geospatial data. So um, what's geospatial data? There are actually three major points. The first is it's multidimensional, minimum two coordinates x, y. Um, many um, data sets have a third one. And there is one um, thing about geospatial data, it can be really huge. Um, for example, we have an open data set of Switzerland orthophotos. They are taken by plane. It's 10, 10 centimeters per pixel over the whole country. That's about 12 terabytes, um, or 8 billion of these. <laughs> and if, if you would stack them, actually, if you, it's, it's, it's about 9 centimeters. So if you take these 9 billion floppy disks, you can go to the moon and back <laughs> from the distance just to have a, a small country like Switzerland. And um, yeah, that's, that's a real challenge to, to process such data set. Um, yeah. And then the other surprising thing is the Earth is not flat even if you heard the contrary sometimes. Um, uh, we have to project the data, and there are some challenges with that too. Basically, we have two kinds of data. The first is the easy one, it's raster data. And the second one is vector data. You all know that. I don't really have to explain that. But I'm, I'm still doing it just to show you um, the importance of that, because if you process raster data, it's, it's really easy. So you can just, for example, count the pixels here. Um, you have, uh, of course, you don't have um, what's what's this six by six pixels. That's a little bit small. In, in usually you have many million by many million, so you can just count the certain um, the, the colors, for example, and you see okay, 30 percent is is a lake, for example. That's really easy with that. On the other hand, if you uh, the, the formats maybe you all know that it's JPEG, PNG, and TIFF. However, there is an additional component together. Um, you need the geospatial um, location information, so there is an affine projection along with the data, so for every pixel you know the exact location. And for example, in TIFF um, there is a, is a header, and in this header all this information is inside. With JPEG and PNG it's, it's an additional file um, uh, specifying that. So um, vector representations are much better um, if you want to have detailed lines, for example. And um, for there, there are some formats, some famous formats like Shapefile, um, GeoJSON, or GeoPackage, and, and many, many more. Um, so if you, if you download them, you, you know what it is. There are millions of data sets available for free, and some commercially. I just put um, a couple here, some, some links. Actually, the slides are on GitHub. I will provide a link at the end. So um, yeah, uh, I, I looked up. Um, there is a Geoportal der Stadt Mannheim. So there is actually some geospatial data available. There are some orthophotos. Um, you have to register there, it seems. And then you can actually download the data. Um, over a server there, so it, it seems to be available too. I'm not, I didn't see the details, the license detail I have to admit, but I think it's possible to get access there. And more and more countries go open data, so um, that's a good thing. However, um, for today, I don't want to use this data. We have another very, very great data set. Um, you probably heard of that. Um, it's called OpenStreetMap. You can go to openstreetmap.org and you will see this one. I made a screenshot of Mannheim at a certain zoom level. You can zoom in. Um, the interesting thing or the interesting fact about OpenStreetMap is it's, it's created by users. So everyone can map, everyone can collect things. You can go outside, you can take your tracking device, your mobile phone, for example, um, with, with GPS tracks, and then you can 
You can um, edit that and add new things. You can say, okay, here is a shop, here is whatever, and you can really um, contribute to this map. And there are millions of people contributing. Nowadays, we have the whole planet um, from from Germany up to North Korea, for example, everything is, is mapped. Um, and it, it's, it's really amazing. Um, there are some countries, I, I mentioned North Korea, because it's not easy to get maps there. And um, thanks to such uh, uh, contributions, we have a, a real cool map of the whole planet. So um, this is the map, of course. That uh, May I ask who of you already used OpenStreetMap? Well, quite, quite a few people, that's great. Not, not all. Um, who used Google Maps? Uh, okay, that's, that's the... <laughs> so you, you, you like, um, you actually like giving free data to Google, that's okay. <laughs> uh, me too, I use, I use <laughs> Google Maps too, so that's great. But the map is only one part. The other thing that's hidden actually, that's the data. We have a huge amount of data here. For example, um, you could um, you could you could get all gas stations of a certain country and count them. So you could count how many uh, gas stations are mapped in all Germany. You could count that, and then you get the results. So you can do you can do things. And there is a really nice um, Python module. It's called OSM NX. It's it's Python. It's called Python for street networks. And it's a module to retrieve, model, analyze, visualize street networks and other geospatial data from OpenStreetMap. It actually um, gets the data online and you can do some cool stuff with it. So I put the two links there. You can install it over Conda, probably PIP too, but I'm, I'm not really often using PIP nowadays. So I, I'm not doing a live um, presentation. I could, I could show it live. I will provide you the, the, the Jupyter Notebook of everything I show now. But due to time constraints, I'm already eight minutes in of my 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, I just show slides. So the first thing, I import some modules. I'm not going into all of them. Um, one is Folium. Folium is, a, is for mapping. Uh, I will show some screenshots um, after. And of course, the most important, the OSM NX and the Network X uh, library. And I'm sure all of you, or most of you know Pandas. And there is an alternative called GeoPandas. And GeoPandas is basically Pandas with, with, a, with an additional component, with additional geometry. So it's just, it's, it's basically the same, but you can do some, some more things. I'm not going really into GeoPandas today. The time is too short. So what we can do, we can uh, specify a place, for example, Mannheim, Germany. I'm sure there are other Mannheims on the planet, so you have to specify the country, of course. And then, um, actually, there are some countries with multiple cities with the same name, then you have to add a district, for example, New York or something, New York, New York, USA. So it's, it's, it's pretty clear. So the state uh, can do that too, but the simplest here is Mannheim, Germany, and then you just call OX, the graph from place, and then you can specify the network type. There are some network types available, for example, um, the drive or bike, this bike path, if you want to know where you can bike there, and you can also download all, then you get all. I just did the drive, so I, I came here by taxi, I wanted to see if this this route is, is correct from if a taxi driver does, does the fastest route, which he didn't, but we can talk about that later. Um, so that's what, what, um, what it looks like. If I plot it, there is a function plot graph, and then you see the street network of Mannheim. You, I think most of you are from Mannheim, so we are more familiar with, with the city, so I think it looks correct, I guess. <laughs> You can export it as a shapefile or other format, um, and that's quite easy. Save graph as shapefile, for example, and then you can store it and you can open it with a with a cheese software, for example, or or um, whatever um, software you want to use. But I'm not going into that. So what I want to have is our nodes and streets. The nodes are the intersection intersection points, and the streets are obviously the the um, streets of the network. And there are 14,441 14, streets. 
I can't say in Mannheim, I have to say in the data set of OpenStreetMap representing Mannheim. So there are probably some small streets not yet in um, OpenStreetMap. So that's what you have to do and map everything missing. And if I um, display the GeoPandas data frame, it looks like this, at least the first three uh, entries of the um, graph network. I can do some, some um, simple analysis showing what kind of street, what street types are um, there. And um, the most um, street types are residential. Um, so that's, that's um, actually it's normal. Most cities are like this in the distribution. I can then um, plot this on Folium with a couple lines of code. Folium um, uses certain um, map tiles in the background. So you can, with, with actually with two or three lines of code, you have a map in Jupyter. So it's a quite cool thing. Um, I recommend um, opening my um, notebook so you can see it in action. So um, I can plot, I can convert the street network to a JSON file and then display it. That's yellow and that's the street network we saw before. So let's geocode some two positions. There, um, the, there is an OX geocode function which, which, which returns um, exact position in uh, GPS coordinates or in WGS84 coordinates. So for example, I take the Mannheim Hauptbahnhof in Mannheim, Germany. I um, geocode it and I get this position back. I checked it, it's correct. And then um, this building here, I enter Julius Hattrichstraße 1 and even the Postleitzahl <laughs> postcode and uh, Mannheim, Germany, and I get the position of this building somewhere in this building, and um, that worked actually. So I um, plot my, I create a map again, and um, I make some markers. You can see that in the code how it's actually done. So um, I make the train station and here the Muffinex building. So we have two, two buildings, great. So the next step is let's, let's find the, um, the shortest path, which is not that easy <laughs> in this situation. You know that if you, with bike, I think it's easier, but if you use the car from the um, Hauptbahnhof to here, you have to make the, this detour. So let's see if this works. So there are some um, functions like get nearest node and get nearest um, and get shortest path. And I get the nearest node of my position. That's just, you have to imagine I get the next intersection closest to this GPS position. And then I calculate the shortest path and it looks like this. But don't be fooled by, by this graph because it's, it's not along the street, it's just a line along the the node, so from node to node, node to node, it's not, it's not matching, so don't be surprised if it doesn't match the streets, it's just a node connection. And um, actually the taxi driver, I don't know if you can actually drive here. Here is the Hochschule, I think, is that correct, somewhere here, and I'm not sure if this is possible. I know the taxi driver, he, he went down here and up here, so <laughs> did he cheat me, or is it correct? They are closed, okay. So that's, that's a job for, for um, people here. You have to correct the data set in OpenStreetMap and close them. <laughs> and then next time this will be perfect. So I'm running out of time, but this, this doesn't matter. I'm, oh, it's, it's a couple of more slides. So another thing you can do um, is retrieving building footprints. So from every building in in every city or every place, you can get the footprints with, with calling geometries from place. You can have some tags, for example, building. You can also have some other um, uh, things there, but uh, the most important geometry in, in the OpenStreetMap dataset are buildings. So you can plot it, it looks like that. Um, so you have really all, all building footprints, because this really some people really map this and they um, it's, it's available of nearly every city worldwide. It's really a, a great stuff. And you can do some queries again. You can, for example, for all buildings or um, city, um, uh, at least the footprints, you can search for museums. And then you get from, for each museum, you get the polygon. So um, it's not complete. Um, there are still some museums in Mannheim you could uh, map uh, or tag at least. I think the building is in there. It's just not tagged correctly. And um, 
I also did another place. There is a function poise from place where you actually you don't get the, the building footprint. You just get the, the, the tag um, museum. It's tourism museum. And if I do that, I get a couple more museums here. It's probably not complete, I would guess. So that's, um, again, a job for you to, to map this and to make this data set as complete as possible. And now with about one minute too much, I'm coming to an end. So thank you very much uh, for the interest and uh, the, um, the slides or, and, and the uh, notebook is located here on GitHub. It's open source, of course, MIT license. You can do what you want with it. Thank you.